You ever get the feeling that someone is talking to only you and you alone? And no matter how many people you try to turn it, turn them on to, it's still just for you. Even if they, even if they say they understand, they don't feel. They don't feel the way you do. Thoughts are there to glide over your head. They're an experience or memory of an emotional event or a pattern or a creation of your own aesthetic, visual, euphoric um, imagination as well. But feelings are the whole point of thought. If, if we didn't have any uh, you know, sensory receptors, we wouldn't know to take our hand off the hot stove. We would die, essentially. If we didn't have any feelings, we wouldn't be able to to create art, really, essentially, or communicate to one another. Because all we'd want to communicate is, you know, we don't want to communicate 2 plus 2 all the time. We want to say, hey, you suck, or hey, I love you, you know. Thought is only... Um, thought is only superior to emotion because with thoughts we can quickly change the temperament of our emotions. So thoughts are designed to help us recreate the best emotions. And emotion itself is the whole point of life. It's like, let's experience something new and something we'll all want to share. In 2013, since we'll share each other's feelings, um, I think that you know we should really start training ourselves to only think positive thoughts and to and to not be lazy and just think whatever you want whenever you want. Uh, one of the the points I think Swedenborg's heaven, the experiment of that thought process that God was trying to make, is that if we do enter heaven in this conscious life, how are we going to adapt to it? You know, how is not only how is Earth a simpler version of heaven, but how how why would we want to share each other's thoughts. Why would we want to have to always be with each other? It seems that solitude will be the new sin in 2012. And I, I don't know what, it's just funny that Nietzsche was such a hermit, and yet 2012 is about sharing each other's thoughts. And when Nietzsche would go through abysses, he said that he needed a kind of comfort zone sometimes to think about. He says occasionally when we're crossing over a bridge, over a deep abyss, we need kind of a friend to guide us. In, in other words, we need someone to think about who we know is a little simpler than us so they can bring us back to normality instead of our intensity. He was saying this is what teachers, friends, and professors are for. They're there to calm you down. You, the intense anointed one who's here to change culture. culture. All these other people are here not for you, but you are the highest observer and God placed them there to give you a grand perspective. You know, I think other people in your lives are, are mirrors of your personality. I mean, even people you don't want in your life are mirrors of your personality because it's not your negative energy being projected from a previous life because of karma, but it's what you need to learn in this life um, be because of versatility. I was born in the week of acceptance, so I'm really accepting of all cultures and all th thought processes and forms of life. And it says Uranus and Sagittarius just loves to study a variety of cultures in general. So, I mean, I'm not only the week of acceptance, so I'm real open to anything that's truth. I don't care if it's weird, as long as it's truth, it's beauty. Um, I was also born the day of acclaim, so I acclaim so many people. I put people on pedestals because that's they didn't get half as much credit as they deserve, so I'm that overkill this time. So you can, I don't know. Um, but I was thinking in that Juno 4 transit, when I discovered Nietzsche, Jupiter was exactly trining um, my natal Neptune because Jupiter was in Virgo. It was trining my Neptune in Capricorn. And what does that say? It says that, a great teacher or guide will come into your life. 
someone you could learn from and you shouldn't over idealize them well that's the one and only Zarathustra catch a cold will return William Miller's prophecy incarnate um, astrology is kind of my spiritual biography whereas my actual life and physical actions you know are just representations of that emotional development and since scientists say that you know evolution requires beauty as we get older I mean as we get more mature as a species not as we get older um, it just makes more sense that these beautiful souls with were, were somewhat attractive you know like Nietzsche wasn't the ugliest guy on the earth you know and Tupac wasn't the ugliest guy on earth I think he was you know the black Jesus of his time the prophet of his time and you know it's not going to be uncommon to because like Socrates was like the oldest you know first philosopher who's supposed to be the ugliest man so I think we're having like a retrograde turning point of we're gonna have beauty and intelligence simultaneously um, yeah about to go out get some drink not too much I'm trying to cut back I'm trying to cut back on negative thoughts and negative substances so maybe in this party We'll just keep it green, go green, and uh, I don't know, talk about this stuff.